When it comes to blockbuster movies, Hollywood seems to love creating films about strong, confident, and heroic men. And as such, many of the heroes portrayed in film are often alpha or sigma males. But when the role calls for a character who is also mysterious, who has a disdain for authority, a complex personality, or someone who is not at all easy to predict, it is almost always the Sigma personality type that is used as a mold to create the perfect and often iconic movie characters that audiences just can't get enough of. In today's video, we'll examine how Sigma males are portrayed on the big screen with nine popular Sigma male movie characters. Number 9. Malik in A Prophet I work for no one, I work for myself. A Prophet is a movie that takes place in a French prison. The main character is a young Sigma named Malik. And how do we know that Malik is a Sigma? Well, Sigmas are individuals who dislike joining tribes or gangs. And in the beginning of A Prophet, we see Malik enter a prison where gangs want to recruit him. But Malik refuses gang affiliation. Instead, he sticks to himself and remains outside the prison hierarchy. This is our first sign that Malik is a Sigma. And although Sigmas like to remain outsiders, they tend to rise in status because they have personality traits, such as pragmatism and intelligence. We see these qualities in Malik. For example, he needs to survive in prison, so he learns to inflict violence, organize drug deals, and manipulate gangsters. Everything he does is rational and calculated. And despite hating both gangsterism and violence, Malik ends up rising in status, becoming a powerful force in the prison hierarchy. By the end of the movie, when Malik leaves prison, he has become one of the most fearsome gang leaders in the whole country. Number 8. Vincent in Collateral Most people, same job, same gig, doing the same thing 10 years from now. Us, we don't know what we're doing 10 minutes from now. Because Sigmas have a rational approach to life, they remain calm, even in dangerous situations. For this reason, they make excellent soldiers, police officers, or even career criminals. In the movie Collateral, the Sigma villain is a hitman named Vincent. There's a man named Vincent. I got another DOA. He's already killed witnesses. He's coming to kill you. Vincent is good at his job because he has this calm Sigma attitude. Throughout the movie, we see Vincent in the most stressful situations imaginable. He assassinates targets. He kills muggers. He avoids the police. But not once do we see the slightest indication that Vincent is afraid or distressed. He never allows emotion to cloud his judgment. At the end of the movie, when Vincent dies, we see him remain totally calm and relaxed right up until his last breath. Although Vincent is an evil man who has twisted beliefs about the world, he's still a good example of the Sigma male's calm and rational approach to life. Number 7. Ryan Gosling in Drive oh, You just got a little boy's father killed. You almost got us killed. And now you're lying to me. So how about this? From now on, every word out of your mouth is the truth. Or I'm gonna hurt you. When people talk about the strong and silent type of man, whether they know it or not, they are talking about the Sigma male archetype. All Sigmas build up strength because they push themselves through sports, martial art, or some other type of physical discipline. At the same time, Sigmas are also introverted men who dislike small talk and shallow conversation. When you combine these two traits, you have a strong but silent man. In the movie Drive, Ryan Gosling plays the driver, a man so mysterious that we don't even know his name. The driver embodies the strong and silent attitude. We see his strength in two ways. Firstly, his job is dangerous. He's a stunt car driver who doubles as a getaway driver for local criminals. He also has a good understanding of fighting and guns. He has connections with a bunch of gangsters, and he's a pretty tough guy. But the driver is a silent character too. We know almost nothing about him, he hardly speaks. We hear none of his thought processes. The only information we receive about the driver comes from his actions. We learn about his character by watching his behavior. Number 6. Tyler Durden from Fight Club It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. The movie Fight Club contrasts the Delta male with the Sigma male. 
So what is a delta male? Well, the concept of delta applies to average men. Deltas work normal 9 to 5 jobs and they don't have particularly high status. Although they're good employees, they make terrible leaders. And in the movie version of Fight Club, the Delta male is represented by the narrator, played by Edward Norton. He works a dead-end job and lives a pretty boring life. In contrast, Tyler Durden is a pure Sigma. He works the weirdest jobs. For example, he makes soap from human fat that he finds behind liposuction clinics. But he also has high status because other men look up to him and follow him. And he doesn't take orders from anybody because he operates outside of the conventional hierarchy. In fact, Tyler Durden is a case study in Sigma male leadership. He has such a powerful vision that he inspires men to quit their daily lives and join Fight Club. And he leads from the front, living with the other men and participating in Fight Club events. Unlike a typical Sigma, we see that respect and hierarchy mean nothing to Tyler Durden. He is motivated by a higher purpose. Number 5. Jeff Costello in Les Samurai I never lose. Never really. There are three typical Sigma traits. Good looks, introversion, and a high degree of skill. In the movie Les Samurai, we can tell that the lead character, Jeff Costello, is a Sigma because he has all three of those qualities. He's good-looking and has a beautiful girlfriend. He's also introverted, and throughout the film, he barely talks. By watching his actions, we learn that he's a skilled assassin. Would I want a bomb? Je ne parle jamais à un homme qui tient une arme dans la main. C'est une règle. Une habitude. But his most important Sigma quality is his ability to think ahead. Jeff Costello displays typical Sigma foresight. Sigmas are rational men who plan carefully. They prepare for multiple possible outcomes. And in the movie, we see Jeff Costello using this approach to his work as a hitman. For example, before he kills one of his targets, he plans an elaborate alibi that is so airtight the police cannot disprove it. Number 4. Lou from Nightcrawler Who am I? I'm a hard worker. I set high goals. My motto is, if you want to win the lottery, you have to make the money to buy a ticket. Some Sigmas out there battle in the working world. They often find the 9-to-5 lifestyle unfulfilling, and as a result, you'll come across Sigmas who are branching out on their own. Often, before they achieve success, they have to pass through a period of difficulty or even poverty. Lou from Nightcrawler is in this exact position. In the beginning of the movie, he is a petty thief. As we get to know him, we realize that he is unemployable in the traditional sense. But when a Sigma finds something that he's passionate about, he often gets obsessed with his work and becomes an expert in his field. And we see this dynamic play out with Lou. He discovers that he's passionate about recording footage of emergencies. For example, he films car accidents and crime scenes, and then he sells this footage to local media channels. It's an ingenious way of making money. Lou becomes so obsessed with capturing emergency footage that he manages to start his own media company. At the end of the movie, he's bought company equipment, leased vans, and employed a few people to work under him. He's an unethical person, but he's a great example of a Sigma rising from unemployed to business owner. Number 3. Jim Stark in Rebel Without a Cause Watch out about choosing your pals. You know what I mean? Don't let them choose you. Rebel Without a Cause tackles the subject of Sigma males in high school. Sigmas usually have the qualities needed to be popular. But when they observe the ridiculous social environment, they decide to rebel against it. Jim Stark is a great example from the 1950s. He doesn't want to fit in with the cool kids. He doesn't want to listen to his parents or teachers. Instead, he rebels against them all. Drinking, smoking, and meeting up with girls. In the 1950s, he was the archetype of the rebellious teenager. But although Sigmas are rebels, in high school they'll normally be popular because they have many positive qualities. And in the movie, we see Jim gaining in popularity. Although he engages in some pretty terrible behavior, people still like him. He gets into a knife fight. He street races the school alpha male who dies during the race. Despite all this bad behavior, Jim gains popularity and even ends up stealing the dead alpha's girlfriend. William James in The Hurt Locker Well, everyone's a coward about something, you know? 
Sigmas understand the need for a man to be competent. As a man, your place in the world depends on the value you generate. If you want to make money, you need to bring something to the table. And William James in The Hurt Locker is an excellent example of a Sigma who has developed a valuable skill set. William James is the team leader of a bomb disposal squad. His position in the military depends on his knowledge of explosives. Luckily, he understands bomb making at the deepest levels, and more importantly, is an expert at defusing bombs. Also note how William James is fearless, even though he has pretty much one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. When he returns to civilian life, he hates the slow pace and shallow interactions. Like a typical Sigma, he wants to get back to the action. And now our final Sigma male movie character. Number 1. Walter Kovacs from Watchmen The night I heard the news, the night I heard 38 people did nothing, was the night I put on this mask. Never wanted to see face in the mirror again. Ashamed to be part of the human race. So I'm not anymore. Sigmas combine physical strength with intellectual work. They compete on both the physical and strategic levels, and Walter Kovacs from Watchmen is a good example. Although he grew up in terrible conditions, he was always a smart child. But he wasn't a nerd. In fact, when he was 10 years old, he beat up two teenage boys, even biting off one of their ears. He's always combined his intelligence with violence. And of all the characters in Watchmen, Walter Kovacs operates outside of society. He prefers vigilante justice to becoming a government agent. That's all for this video. Hopefully, we've shed some insight into why Sigmas are so popular on the big screen. We hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.